A proud product of Sri Lanka's free education system, she has risen to become one of the country's youngest surgeons. She balances her work as a doctor with a love for dancing, singing and sports and hopes to do more for women in the medical field. ETV Power Women proudly presents Dr. Dilani Samarakun. Hi, and welcome to ECV Power Women. Um, today we have with us a very special guest, someone who I'm very excited to have on the show. Um, she's one of the youngest surgeons in the country. Um, Dr. Dilani Samarakon, welcome to ETV Power Women. It's a real pleasure to have you here today. I'm very happy to be here as well. <laughs> um, Dilani, I want to ask, I was reading the research about you, and I understand that your first choice in profession was to be an astronaut. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what, what made actually, you change your mind? Uh, actually, you know, the, when I was young, I used to love to uh, watch the stars, okay. right? I, I still do, yeah. uh, but I just realized that it's a little bit far-fetched, you okay. know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> trying to be an astronaut, especially, you know, it's very difficult uh, when you're in Sri Lanka yeah, to uh, pursue such a dream. Plus, uh, I think my father had a big influence on... Yeah. Uh, you know, my thoughts and, you know, the way I, what, the things that I wanted and things yeah. like that, you know, he, he really wanted uh, one of his, I mean, I have, I have another sister, yeah. yeah, we have two girls, so one of the children to become a doctor. Okay. Uh, so, you know, and all that I was like guided or maybe sort of pulled in the direction of that because yeah. I was my father's daughter first and foremost. Yeah. You know, I, I think my mother will be a little bit upset about <laughs> that. Uh, anyway, uh, being an astronaut, yeah. you know, that was, you know, going in a spaceship and all these, you know, Apollo 13 yeah. and things like that, everything interested me, you know, Arthur C. Clarke yeah. stuff, yeah. you know, all that, and he was in Sri Lanka. Yeah, so. which is amazing. Yeah, and then, uh, of course, even though I couldn't become an astronaut, I actually had the chance to go to the NASA uh, oh, wow. I stood in uh, Texas and you know, okay. I went and actually stood near a rocket and I thought, okay, at least. Yeah, I've come this far. <laughs> come this far. <laughs> so that's as far as the astronaut business went. Well, I think that's a really, really cool thing though. I think that's <laughs> yeah. incredibly cool. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, luckily for us, you continued, you know, down the field uh, of medicine. Yeah. Uh, and you know what I love about you most, I think, is the fact that you are so proud of the fact that you are truly a local product. And I know that you know, yeah. it must have been very tough yeah. for you. I mean, tell us a little bit about your experiences in, in sort of medical yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I think it's a very uh, tough sort of field in yeah. the sense like, you know, first you have to compete in your A-levels. It's a very, very, very competitive exam. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I was at Bishop's College. Yes. And uh, you know, at, from Bishop's, you know, I was like, at in my year, I was the only person who went to medical college. Because, yeah. You know, the competition is very, it's very, we have very such tough. A high standard. Very high standard. Yeah. And I don't like sitting down and studying. Okay. So it was, <laughs> it was doubly hard for you. <laughs> I know. Uh, I like to have fun. So it was yeah. really, really difficult, you know, those days. Because, you know, you had to sit and study. And, you know, during the breaks that you got yeah. the, in the university, uh, everyone else, you know, so we have a plan to study and I used to just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to get away, yeah. you know, just have a good time yeah, and right. come back. And I used to be like one of those people who come back uh, at the end of the whole thing. Right. And for the exam, you have an exam at the start of yeah. it and then study, cram, cram and study for a few, say a few days yeah. and then try and somehow get through <laughs> the <laughs> Uh, but and as you say, like, you know, then from then onwards, you pass the MBBS, that's the yeah. first hurdle. And then you get into the postgraduate, you do the internship, of course, and then you get into the postgraduate uh, system. So uh, when I say I'm a truly Sri Lankan product, where people come and ask me, yeah. <coughs> Were you, uh, did you study in the UK? Yeah. Uh, or I mean, anywhere else. Yeah. So then I, you know, I, as you say, I very proudly say that I'm 
totally Sri Lankan yeah. product in yeah. that sense because of uh, undergraduate, postgraduate, everything yes, I have done, done here. Yeah. Only for two years after that, it's mandatory for us to go overseas. for overseas for tr uh, training. So for that, I went to the UK. Yeah. Uh, Everyone was really nice over there, but yeah. you know, I'm very, very Sri Lankan at heart. Yeah. So I was truly miserable. Yeah, hard. <laughs> right? hard kind of very, very miserable. Yeah. I used to look at the sky and you know, watch all the planes going and think, you know, I need to be on the plane. <laughs> I need to come home. <laughs> <laughs> those two years passed fast. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing, you know, truly Sri Lankan, yeah. uh, happy to be back. Yeah. Uh, of course, everywhere you get problems, and you know, yeah. but then, you know, this is our country and uh, this is where I want to be. Right, well, on that note, we're going to take a little break, but for everyone watching at home, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with lots more from the lovely Dr. Dilani. So we'll see you after this break. Hi, you're watching Power Women on ETV, your lifestyle channel. Um, Delini, I want to ask you, you know, as a woman, is it quite tough in being in your profession or is the medical uh, profession here quite easy? Well, um, not really. I mean, I think one thing is being a woman, a woman in the surgical field. Yeah, uh, it's a bit tough, it's tough because it's like a man's world. Okay, uh, it's in, quite in male dominated in that field. Very much so. Yeah, uh, in Sri Lanka, there are very, very few female surgeons. In the UK, I think there are a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about UK because that's where I went yeah, for my training. Your... But even there, I think, you know, you get fewer uh, women surgeons. in surgery uh, than um, uh, men. The, the thing is, even in the UK, you know, yeah. when you go, uh, being a woman, yeah. you have to work doubly hard really? to prove okay. yourself. Yeah. I mean, where there are more women and yeah. I suppose more equal rights there. Yeah. Sort of anyway. When you come to Sri Lanka, it's actually hard because you know one thing is I am one of the younger surgeons. Yeah. <laughs> the sec second thing is I'm a woman. Yeah. So you've got you know, two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two strokes and against you. I know. I know. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it's uh, tough. Some uh, some people, yeah. uh, especially males, they yeah. don't like it very much. Okay. So sometimes it's, it's uh, sometimes actually quite tough. You meet people when I suppose at their worst. Really, exactly. You know? Yeah. So yeah. you've got to kind of. Yeah, uh, and th th that's the thing, and I, and I think that uh, you know I I love the patient care part. Yeah. You know, I think that's the thing I really enjoy when I chose uh, a field yeah. uh, to further my career you know theater appealed to me a lot okay. so surgery yeah. anesthesia those are the things that yeah. but then you know as surgeons we have the best of both worlds I think because right. you you get to do the surgical yeah. part and be in theater where that's a practical yeah. bit and then you get to interact with the patients Patient. and that I really love I think I like talking yeah. to people yeah. and I think you know what I want to be to the patient is someone they can talk to someone they can relax with yeah. you know be a sort of a friend yeah. you know uh, so that you know they they actually relax yeah I think like you know when we yeah. come to talk to you you know <laughs> <laughs> well, I was about to say I mean you've just got this <laughs> amazing personality about you so I can just see how easy it would be yeah I mean, know, for I, a patient to kind yeah of it's like you know people relax then yeah. and then you know, it's easier for them to come out with their yeah. problems and Sri Lanka is a is a conservative society yeah. so when fewer uh, female surgeons means sometimes you get patients who've been sitting at home with their problem for oh, months right. on end and then yeah until they got to know okay I mean yeah. she's there so we can just come it, yeah. and then sometimes they come and tell me you know we never knew that there was, was a, someone yeah. like you and then you know you know, talking to you is very easy. Yeah. You know, that's that's what I want to hear. That's yeah. the thing that gives me pleasure. What is it like to actually hold somebody's life in your hands? I mean, just f the responsibility of it, yeah. and and also just the sort of feeling of oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, uh, all the you know, we have been trained from yeah. the time we became. I suppose we started med school, yeah. right? And then you this go on like that, you know, you start by just talking to patients like that. Yeah. And then from internship onwards, you actually take on the responsibility. Yeah. And at surgery, you know, actually you're putting a knife to the Into patient. Some, yeah. yeah, so that actually takes a lot of, I think, courage yeah. because, you know, I can still remember, you know, at the accident service, at the, service at the National Hospital, yeah. that's where we 
first put the suturing right you know? okay we put the first the stitch yeah. and at that point holding that needle mm. but you don't want to hurt someone yeah. isn't it right? <laughs> so you are just holding there you know you want to cry you can't cry <laughs> <laughs> that's the patient who's going to think you are <laughs> right so so you know you just struggle so much tremble yeah. so much and then you try and put the first stitch yeah. right and then that is what i tell my juniors now first stitch first thing is very difficult yeah, yeah? nobody wants to cut because yeah. you know you know it hurts yeah. right but then you are doing something to make someone That's better right. yeah and as you say it's very stressful especially you know when you do major surgical yeah. procedures it's very very stressful till the patient goes home yeah, you know you know you know you do something you know you do what is necessary and later on you go home and think should i have done it a little bit more differently yeah. should i have done this rather than this you know like yeah. that so till the patient is okay goes home you know you are definitely kind of on manage, pins yeah. <laughs> yes right on that note we're going to take another little break um but for everyone watching at home make sure you stay tuned to this because i know you're finding it as fascinating as i am and we're going to be right back with a lot more from Dr. Dimini so we'll see you after this break. Hi and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh we've been having a wonderful chat with um Dr. Dilini Samarkun, someone who I am thrilled to have on the show with us. Um Dilini, I wanted to ask you about your childhood and in particular about your father who I understand you were very close to. Um just tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up. Yeah. Uh my my father, uh well, he two, there were two girls. Yeah. So, uh I was the boy in the family, okay. right? <laughs> the son. The son. Uh, yeah, oh. and uh I used to wear shorts, okay. cut my hair really short, and then look like a boy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, people used to call me Mali okay, wow. all the time. And then there was a time that I thought, you know, actually, if I pretend really hard enough, I'll become a boy, <laughs> boy when, when I grow up. <laughs> and and uh, I used to accompany him. Oh, everywhere he went yeah. because of that I think you know he and I we had a uh, uh, sort of a rapport yeah. you know which uh, which sort of made him made me sort of is like confident in right. that sense okay. as well yeah. you know yeah. and he really wanted to uh, well, have one of the daughters become a doctor so you know I think that really sort of made me yeah. also want that yeah. uh, and Uh, well surgery of course i think i chose for yeah, myself your, because yeah. it's yeah uh, that way i mean i think my father in you know, the singing and you know yeah. the love for uh, art and uh, drama yeah. and things like that also came from him because he is uh, he used to play the accordion and sing okay, and wow. yeah he used to sing in sinhalese english yeah. and tamil and hindi all lives my but <laughs> but still he was still used to, he used to sing if there was anyone in the audience who was yeah. you know who knew Tamil or Hindi they'll say you know what they listen to <laughs> no, that's not really <laughs> oh it sounds oh, like a lovely a lovely childhood. childhood yes and that is the thing it's all a lot of fun and yeah. you know very free sort of childhood uh, all those things i think maybe shape who you are yeah. isn't it How did you meet your husband? Uh, did you meet you met him in Sri Lanka? Yeah, yeah, uh, he and I we were batchmates in our okay. yeah, in our university yeah. uh, life and uh, he well initially I actually used to uh, not like him very much. Oh really? Okay. <laughs> Okay, only it turned the corner. Uh he he's uh we were in the same group, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the first two years we have to dissect a human body. Okay. Right? And that's uh, initially it's very Tough, gruesome. Yeah. yeah, very very gruesome. It's very the first few days it's very difficult. It's yeah. difficult on the eyes because of the formalin. Yeah. And you know, you don't want to cut someone up. Yeah. You know, you live know. alive or dead. Yeah. It's very difficult. Uh, But uh you know, and because of that, you know, you have your little squabbles, isn't it? Yeah. And <laughs> then, then well, <laughs> and because of that uh, we had a few arguments as well but uh, no i think all in all he has been sort of uh, uh, been there with me yeah. through thick and thin yeah. you know through difficult periods and uh, he's uh, i talk a lot he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> So uh, he so great balance. <laughs> great balance and I think he keeps me or you know helps me keep my feet on the ground yeah. you know I am a little bit of a emotional person you okay. know a uh, bit 
hypersensitive, I think. Right. You know, I have my uh, ups and downs okay. like that. Okay. It goes on. Whereas he's very, very stable. Yeah. So I think it's uh, worked out nice. He's, he's my best friend. Oh, right. So, just, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's been good. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I know that you took part in Miss Sri Lanka pageant, oh. which, I, you know, is incredible. I mean, how did you kind of fit this in with everything else that you were sort of doing? Yeah. Uh, uh, in school, uh, yes. I went to Bishop's College, yes. uh, and I'm very thankful about that. You yeah. know, I, I think I've got an all-round education yeah. there. And uh, the thing is, you know, we used to have these fashion shows, and, you know, all the, I was too shy, too shy yeah. to take part in that. And I think... I wish I was one of those <laughs> girls, you know, <laughs> could just kind of yeah, who used to, you know, parade around looking really gorgeous, you know. <laughs> uh, I was too nervous and too yeah. shy to do that. But then uh, when it came, you know, after I left school and, yeah. you, know, you know, got a little bit of confidence, I thought, you know, it's now or never. Yeah. You know, I do it or I don't do it. Yeah. So uh, then I thought, yeah, why not? Just go Fabulous. ahead, you know, yeah. I just go ahead and do it. Anyway, so... Uh, I went and you know, took part, that's a long while ago. Uh, never thought I'll win a title, but uh, it was it's good. It was yeah, a was different, experience. very, very different experience. Yeah. Uh, it's another world. Yeah, I can uh, imagine it must be. Yeah, and I think it made me appreciate my field uh, also. That because much, sometimes yeah. you think, isn't it, that you know the other side of the Especially. coin is much much better so you know I think I saw part of it and you know I still continue to enjoy the fashion world yeah. the world of all the beauty queens yeah. and you know uh, I think that that is still there and that is also part of my life and I had a little bit of experience in there so yeah. that's all good just fun yeah right well we've got to take another little break um, but for all of you watching at home We've got the confession cam coming up next, so make sure you stay tuned for that and we'll see you soon. Hi and welcome back to ECV Power Women. Uh, actually, welcome back to my favorite segment of the show. I know I say this every week, but it really is. <laughs> it's actually where we um, ask your family and colleagues and friends to speak about you, to give us more of an insight into who you are. So um, why don't we take a look at what they've had to say. She was a person who was fun-loving, always uh, full of energy, uh, even in at home or in school, uh, always uh, wanting to do whatever she did, she did her, she was good at it. She was a very strong person, I must say. From the small age, she did whatever she wanted. And of course, I always thought that you had to give her free hand and let them develop themselves. She was always running behind the father and slowly she used to get into the, he said, now today you're not coming with me, please stay back. But she was, <laughs> slowly she'll open the door, get, get in and crouch down and wait. <laughs> say, I, once he starts the class, he'll say, I'm inside it. <laughs> there were what they call bullies in the classes. But she was never bullied by anyone. If they are the bullies, uh, one side, she was on another side, she was another person who was to oppose them like that. I want them to be happy and, and of course, that they have done well is the great thing for me. You know, Dr. Dini, I came to know her um, first time uh, to diagnose my breast cancer. Right. Uh, then she gave me a letter to take. Uh, X-ray and ultrasonic scanning, right. mammogram at that time, I took it. And uh, she told it was malignant and she who operated me. Right. And she looked after me very well. She cares for me very well. Yeah. And she's very generous to her patients. Mm -hmm. And she cares for her patients very well. When I was operated, Suddenly it started to bleed. So on that day she was on holiday. So the house officer came and saw and she, he got excited and he gave a call. So she came immediately. She came and dressed me, she did everything for me and went. 
it's nice when you see yeah, the uh, yeah. impact that you've yeah. had. Yeah, on she's one of my favorite patients, yeah. you know, and uh, she. Even now she calls me and uh, she'll say, Doctor, you're my angel. <laughs> Even for the slightest thing, she'll call me and yeah. tell me, you know, that's, uh, uh, sh I think I've operated on all her, you know, generations of her family, her family. You, know, okay. you know, all strata of that, you know, wow. her daughters, yeah. uh, grandson. Oh my goodness. Yeah, wow. I've, okay. I've so operated yeah, after her. Wow. So I've, yeah, she's the family is like my yeah. friends now. Yeah. Yeah. And my mother, I think she's she's uh, when my father actually passed away yes. about nearly twenty years ago. Yeah. So since then she's the one who she's the one who's been there for me. Yeah. Uh, she's still there, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes mothering me. We ha have our own like little yeah. squabbles, but yeah, you as know. all mothers and daughters <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you know, like uh, Rock, I know that she's behind me. You know, no yeah. matter what. Whether I do well or you know whether I'm happy, sad, yeah, whichever she's way, there, she's yeah. always there. Unconditional love. I think you know that's what yeah. you get from, from a mother. mother. Yeah. That that is, I think that shows. Yeah. And the fact that you know I used to actually harass my father a lot. <laughs> I thought that was really cute, the way your mom said how you used to get in the car and hide. He has no choice, isn't it? He had no choice. <laughs> so that was me. <laughs> Great. Well, when we come back, the dreaded 10. So don't go anywhere and we'll see you after the short break. Hi and welcome back to the final segment of ETV's Power Women. Um, it's one where I put our lovely Dr. Delaney on the spot <laughs> and ask her some questions which I'm sure she will find incredibly easy. Um, right, uh, I will start. I'm getting goosebumps. Are you? <laughs> Question number one. Um, what would you have done if you had won the Miss Sri Lanka crown? in 1999, what would you have done? I would have actually loved to, uh, well I did win one title so yeah. I went to the States but uh, if I won the main title I think I would have probably maybe you know gone into a bit more of the fashion, fashion world. Right. Do you think you would have still gone into into surgery? Would you have? Definitely, definitely, definitely yes. What movies make, well, what movie makes you cry the most? Do you have one that fits sort of Yeah, can I just say some of the Hindi movies? Okay. They make me cry. I cried like a baby when I watched, uh, well, Khabi Kushi Khabi Gam. Okay. <laughs> How would you react if you heard that your husband was unfaithful? Well, if a relationship is not working, yeah. you know, it's not, one person's fault, right? But sometimes it's, you know, you can't just look at the that picture and yeah. say that it's, you know, it's that person's fault. And you know, maybe you know there is something that is missing yeah. in this relationship. Yeah, we'll try and talk about it because you know I, I think it's not as easy as just you know Same. being married. Yeah. And sometimes you see, isn't it? It's marriages. Sometimes they are. Just sham. Yeah. Right? There's there's yeah. nothing in it. They just stay together. And I think you know if the, if it is not working, and there is some reason for that, you know, you try and correct it. Yeah. You know, Figure maybe you know, it. maybe you feel obviously sad and yeah. bad and all that, angry and all that. But yeah. you know, at the same time, you know, as adults, yeah. you know, you must think that there's maybe something that is not right, yeah. something that is not working, yeah. and try you know, and try it. try and fix it. And if you can't. You have to think for them that is that is being a dozen that's being honest. Yeah. I think that is very important, isn't it? How do you tell a patient that they can't be cured? That's that's very difficult, especially especially this comes in when a patient has a cancer. Right? Um, then you have to try and tell them that this is this is this is as far as we can go. Yeah. But you know, that is as far as the disease goes. But there are ways that one can take it up. Yeah. There are people who have overcome, you know, I mean, I, people say that, or even overcome cancer. So yeah. there are, you know, it's the way you take it up. Yeah. You know, you try and help them take it up in a more positive way. Well, it's not easy. 
What is the one thing that you would say has made you the, the woman you are today? Mm, my, my parents' influence uh, and actually my father in particular but my mother has been the rock behind him yeah. so I think both of them together and also actually my husband yeah. he he has stood by me through thick and thin yeah. so he's, he's another person who's contributed. What other profession would you have chosen apart from doctor and astronaut? <laughs> uh, anything else? Well, I would have loved to be one of the models in Paris. Okay. You know, I love to watch, watch those uh, fashion shows yeah. and you know walk like that on the you know <laughs> catwalk. Fabulous. You know, without a care in the world yeah. and look good as well. Yeah. You know, at the same time, uh, I would have loved to do that. Yes. If your house is on fire. What would be the first thing that you would take? Members of my family. Yeah. What song would you say describes you best? <laughs> That's a GD. <laughs> you got me there, I think. Uh, uh, actually, I can't. Have you ever taken recreational drugs? <laughs> No, actually, unfortunately not, okay. because I don't even take any alcohol. I'm okay. very boring that way. <laughs> so when people say, you know, can I just fix you a, a cocktail just drink, a little, yeah. little bit? I said, no, actually, I'm high anyway, so <laughs> I don't you know, I don't, know I don't need alcohol. <laughs> so unfortunately, no, no, okay. I've, I've not actually seen. No, I think I've no, I'm not seen even. What would you say is your greatest achievement? Oh well, I think I think uh, being who I am, yeah. you know, not not my academic things or yeah. the other things. I think being who I am because I I am proud of who I am, how what I have achieved, yeah. and um, you know, I think that uh, I, I think I think I am humble, yeah. uh, and I yeah. I want to be. I hope uh, I hope I never change because you know from where I started you know when people tell me that you know you're still the same you have you're yeah. just like the person we met 10 years ago you're Lovely. still the same I think that is the thing that that's what I want to be yeah. and I don't think I would change that, that is yeah. 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 great well okay. that's it you okay. survived the dreaded 10 you did beautifully the song the song, <laughs> the song. But that's a tough one because you know it's really hard to kind of Thing, unless you've actually thought about that before, it's. it's Can I know. just say, girls just like to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. Just great want one, to have yeah. Fun. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think very appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show as well, and uh, we'll see you again next week with another special guest. So make sure you stay tuned in. Um, if you want to learn more about the show or catch up on anything you've missed, log on to our website www.etv.lk and click on Power Women. Uh, or you can catch up with us on our Facebook page. And we'll see you again next week. <laughs>